Hi, community. Welcome to another episode of Allie's Take. I'm Coach Allie. I'm really excited to be with you today. And I'm actually super excited to talk to you about our topic today. I have some background in traumatic somatic therapy. And so I'm really excited to dive into this episode and give you a little bit of background on, from a perspective of the nervous system. And so this episode today is understanding insomnia through the lens of the nervous system. So we're going to dive right into the material today. When our nervous system detects a threat, it responds by engaging in an instinctive protective state. So in the case of insomnia, generally this is fight or flight mode, but freeze mode can also occur. We'll talk about all this later. When our nervous system is on high alert and fight or flight mode is activated, we are in a hyper aroused state, which will include many sensations. Racing heart could be there, palpitations. I mean, there's so many more thoughts, rumination, overthinking, so many more, and emotions, anxiety, fear, panic, and again, so many more. Hyper arousal can override our sleep drive, and often any med or supple supplement with that we throw at it. Our brain is pretty brilliant, and it has evolved to be this protective machine to keep us safe. It's a survival machine. And so it's constantly scanning for signs of danger. And there's actually a term for this. It's called neuroception. It's this intuition of our brain looking around, scanning our environment at all times to detect threat. This defense mechanism, however, it's, it's not a perfect system, and it can be misinformed, meaning that it can't tell the difference between a real threat or a perceived one. In the case of insomnia, it has been misinformed, right? So unfortunately, the part of the brain the limbic system is the most primitive part of the brain, and it does not understand language or reason. So we cannot talk our way out of it. If you've ever tried talking your way out of an anxiety attack or had someone tell you, just calm down, you know that it doesn't work that way. We have to feel our way to safety by showing our brain through our responses and actions that we are indeed safe. This needs to occur on both a cognitive and an experiential level. So this is a little bit about our threat detection system here. In nervous system speak, insomnia can be defined as traumatic stress. And we're going to talk about what that means. So traumatic stress results from real or perceived exposure to what is understood by our nervous system as life-endangering stressors that we can't readily escape. So basically what happens is we, our brain has de detected wakefulness, sleeplessness as a threat, as a life-endangering situation. And since it's one that we can't readily escape from because we face this every single night, it's an ongoing stress. And it therefore becomes inescapable because we face it every night. So this is why it is defined as traumatic stress. It's an ongoing experience that our brain has perceived as a threat and it is, it's not escapable. It's happening and occurring every night. So Trauma, it is something that dysregulates three complexes of our automatic nervous system. And we're going to talk about these complexes right now. So we have the sympathetic part of our nervous system. And this is where, this is what is responsible for that fight or flight, engaging that fight or flight mode. And also the hyperarousal. And when we have experienced traumatic stress, 
this part of our nervous system is overactivated. The ventral vagal system, this part of our autonomic nervous system, this is our reset and restore part of our nervous system. This is that sense of connectivity when we're kind of in the flow state and feeling really good. This is underactivated and mostly offline when we're experiencing traumatic stress. The dorsal vagal complex, this is responsible for the freeze or shutdown mode and where hypoarousal concern is, is located. And this part of our autonomic nervous system is unpredictably activated. So trauma also impacts three major brain regions, the brainstem, the limbic system, and the frontal cortex. These parts of the brain are understood as the instinctive, emotional, and thinking regions of the brain. So applying all of this information that we've just gone over to the experience of insomnia, we can see that initially all regions of the brain have detected and determined the experience of sleeplessness as a danger. Therefore, a protective state has been activated, fight or flight, freeze, shutdown, or a combination of these. At this point, the frontal cortex is mostly offline. Our instinctive and emotional brain, they're leading the show. So what what we can take from this is that recovery starts when we start understanding what is happening within our autonomic nervous system, and we understand these responses of our brain and why this is happening, then we have a new awareness. We have a new education around this experience. So recovery begins when we understand cognitively that the experience of insomnia and anxiety, although very uncomfortable, are not actually dangerous. It takes experiential understanding and felt experiences of safety for the limbic system and the amygdala to get the message and to turn off the alarm system. And that just takes time. Time and repetition of showing up to this experience in a new way. So the good news here is that our nervous system It wants homeostasis and safety. And given the right conditions, it will naturally, albeit slowly, find its way back to regulation. Moving on here, recovery is about building capacity to tolerate discomfort. And we lean into the discomfort to show the scared brain that it is safe to do so. And we do this in small, tolerable steps, right? There's a term in nervous system language called titration, meaning we kind of come into the experience of discomfort and we kind of maybe dip a toe into it and then we come back, we pull back from it. So we're not going all at once into this discomfort. We're kind of slowly engaging in this experience of discomfort building our capacity to do so slowly with tolerable steps. So in and out of it, right? Not all at once. This is why recovery takes time because we can't jump into it all at once. It would overwhelm our our nervous system. So we widen our window of tolerance and recover more quickly and easily when we go beyond our window of tolerance into states of dysregulation and hyperarousal and hypoarousal. So we do this one step at a time. We slowly show the brain that we're okay by acting okay, which will soon not be an act, but a new way of living because we really are okay. We can handle it. And this is how we widen that window of tolerance. So recovery, it doesn't mean that we remain regulated all of the time. This isn't at all realistic or even human because life is inherently filled with peaks and valleys. But we do build capacity for all of it and we return to regulation more easily and more peacefully. 
So it's a process that takes time, but with the right education, with a big dose of courage, and with a whole lot of self-kindness, we will get there. And this kind of understanding, recognizing what's happening in our scared brain, being aware of all this is really key to demystifying all that's happening and to start to move into the experience of recovery in a really helpful way. So I hope that this was some good information for you that you can use to assist you on your path to recovery. I love the nervous system um, education because it is so helpful. I, I remember when I first learned about nervous system regulation and the autonomic nervous system and thinking, why do they not teach this in school? It is so important to know about our own brain and our own body and how it's affecting everything that's going on within us. So I hope that this was helpful. I appreciate you tuning in. I really do. Thank you so much for your time. Know that we are available to help support you on your recovery path. We have one-on-one -on -one sessions available that you can book on our website. So many great coaches and you know I'm on there as well. So I would love to see you in a one-on-one -on -one sometime soon as well. Thanks so much and have a wonderful, wonderful day. Hi, it's me, Coach Daniel, and I hope you found the video you just saw full of inspirational content and full of educational content as well, because that's really what we try to do here in the school. We try to educate and inspire. And, you know, if you're finding that things are clicking for you and sleep is happening easier and you're leaving the struggle, please let us know in the comment section, because we live for that. We live for hearing how somebody is finding sleep and life becoming lighter and easier. And you know, not only are you doing us a huge favor as sleep coaches and like filling our tank with that gas that makes us never want to stop doing this, but you're also helping the community. You're helping by inspiring other people. And by commenting, you're telling YouTube that this was interesting and YouTube feeds our content to more people so that they can discover our teachings and things get easier for them. So again, if you found things getting easier for you, please let us know in the comment section. Can't wait to hear from you.